Today's practical is about uh, moments, about a fixed point. Okay, the main aim of this uh, particular practical is to verify the principle of moments. Okay, now we have been uh, this topic we have covered this uh, something like about a few months back. So I think it would be good if we can have a quick look at what moments is all about. So give me a minute here. Let me call this up. Okay, here we go. Right. Um, yeah. The goal is uh, as uh, written here is to verify the principle of moments or P O M for short. Now uh, let us try to recall when we calculate moments, which is actually talking about how fast or how quickly something turns about a pivot. We calculate that we calculate that by taking the force acting on the lever and mu multiply that by the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the pivot. In symbol form, you see something like this. M is equal to capital F of force multiplied by the perpendicular distance D. Remember uh, or recall that I actually introduced a small little right angle here to help us recall or remember that this is talking about perpendicular distance. So, what is POM? Well, POM is simply the sum of clockwise moment is equal to the sum of anti-clockwise moment. And this is true when a lever is actually balanced, meaning that there's no turning to be observed. Okay, when force acts on some uh, lever. Right, so that brings us, uh, let's now uh, move back to the uh, practical handout. Okay, so what you're supposed to do is to suspend some masses at sim uh, various distances from a pivot. When you do that, you find that you generate different kind of movements. And your task is to basically investigate how to balance the clockwise and anti-clockwise moments. So how do we go about doing that? Right, uh, first let us check that you have the following apparatus. Uh, there are six of them. I will call up the picture so that you know what I'm talking about. Nah? Okay, one moment. Here we go. Right, uh, retort stand. Okay, you should have this with a blue base. This is a cork and the optical pin over here. Some plasticine two masses the smaller one is a 50 gram and this is a 100 gram masses and uh, this is a meter rule um, just to share with you this meter rule do make sure that um, this meter rule has a hole okay drilled into it at a 50 centimeter marking this is a 50 centimeter marking a 50 centimeter marking there are two scales here which can use to help you uh, you should find a hole drilled into this okay Right, okay, so you have seen that you have all these uh, masses. Now let's have a look at the diagram that uh, representing what you're setting up. Okay, so this is how it looks like. The retort stand is over here. Optical pin, um, of course, is not drawn, it's actually a cork. And also the where the 50 gram masses and 100 gram masses are suspended. Now take note, for the 50 gram, the distance of the where you suspend the 50 gram masses to the center of the pivot, which is for this case optical pin, this distance is labeled as D1 and for the 100 gram mass, the distance of where it's being suspended to the optical pin, that would be D2. Okay, so what does a 0 and a 100 on the meter rule represent? What do we, what's the meaning of this? Okay, so the 0 is basically to tell you that um, we are taking one of the scale, as you have seen, the ruler has two scales along the top and along the bottom. We just choose one of them and uh, we use that to be the 0 marking which is right at the edge and the 100 centimeter marking which is right at the bottom. Okay, we will, I will explain a little bit more as we go, uh, as we look at the setup. Now let's have a look at how we set this up. Eh? Okay, I'm going to show you this video and I'm going to voice over as the actions are taking place. Eh? Right, so if you have read the worksheet properly, you will have noticed that you are supposed to suspend the ruler 25 centimeters above the bench. So what I'm doing right now is basically to uh, adjust the clamp to the right height from the bench, not from the retort stand. Okay, so there's a little bit of uh, estimation being made here. So yeah, this process goes on. Okay, I'm checking again whether I'm at the 25 centimeter mark. Okay. So that's quite good. Right, so where do we move on? Then uh, we move on to complete procedure number one, which is to clamp the optical pin horizontally. So notice how the clamp is positioned and how I'm positioning the cock with respect to the clamp itself. Okay. Now, as you are doing this, try to align such that the cock is almost horizontal. Now you grab the optical pin, insert it through the hole, 
and position it such that the optical pin is inserted into the middle of the cork. Right? Now push it in, but do not push all the, the optical pin all the way into the cork. The ruler is supposed to be able to move uh, quite freely okay, between the end of this pin and the cork itself. So as you release it, you find that the ruler is usually not balanced. Most uh, practical objects are not really balanced at the midpoint. So what do we need to do? We will have to actually add some plasticine to balance the ruler. That is actually corresponding to step 3 in your procedure. Okay. So what do we do? Now I'm, I have in my hand a little bit of uh, plasticine. This is where the plasticine is. Just tear off a little bit. And uh, where you place uh, the plasticine, be mindful. Right. Look at this. On this surface of the ruler, there are markings. There are the readings along the ruler itself. So let's think about this. If you place the plasticine on this particular surface, well, you're going to have a problem soon, isn't it? You will be blocking the marking, right? So this plasticine is meant to be placed at the back of the ruler where there are no markings. So let's have a look here. Okay, I'll place it at the, almost at the end of the ruler. It's behind, so you can't see it. Then I will balance the ruler. I'll try to um, then I'll let go of the ruler and see where in which direction it goes. There it goes. It's going up. This suggests, therefore, that um, it's still not. Uh, we still need to add a little bit more plasticine to increase the weight or the mass on this segment of the ruler. Okay. Well, oh. okay. It's almost there. All right. It's still turning a little bit. Okay, look at how I have positioned my hand under the ruler. This will help to support the ruler. Okay, so leaving it be uh, for a while, you find that the ruler will be able to balance. Okay, okay. I just noticed that the ruler is still swinging a little bit in a um, anti-clockwise direction. So I have added a little bit more plasticine, and I start to balance it again. And after I have released my hand, take note that the ruler is more or less quite balanced. Now this movement is actually due to the fan, so uh, when we are conducting the practical later on, I will be switching off the fan in the lab. Okay. Now, this is what we mean by a balanced ruler. It should be swinging slightly, uh, preferably of course it should be stationary. If it's swinging slightly to the uh, in an anti-clockwise and then followed by a clockwise direction, more or less horizontal, we can accept that as a balanced ruler. Okay. Now let's continue. So what's next? Step 4. We are supposed to hang the 50 gram mass on one side of the ruler at the 5 cm mark. Okay, so where is the 5 cm mark? Alright. Now if you look at the ruler, you remember you recall that I mentioned to take note of the 0 and the 100 meter marking. Alright. So if you for my case I've chosen the scale at the top, the 0 is at this position, so the 5 cm mark is somewhere around here. Now let's think about this for a while. If it's 5 cm marking, then the distance D1 of the 50 gram mass to the center of the ruler where the pin is, uh, which is at this particular location, this distance D1 will actually be 45 cm. Okay, so let's have a look. Right, so a line that the thread is uh, along the markings at the 5 cm as well as the 45 cm right at the bottom. Then we move on to the next step, which is to place the, the 100 gram mass at the other end of the ruler. Now, when you are doing this, please be mindful, huh? the ruler can swing easily, so always make sure that you have your hand below the ruler. Okay, so it's for the earlier part, you find that the ruler is turning in the clockwise direction. So it means that the distance of the 100 gram mass from the pivot is just way too far. We have to move it nearer. Okay, so that's what we are trying to uh, figure out. The position for the 100 gram mass such that this whole ruler will balance again. So let's have a look. So I release my hand. You find that the ruler is still turning in the clockwise direction. Therefore, I've shifted it even nearer. Oh, a little bit too much. So I've shifted it outwards a little bit and I let it go and almost there, it's a little bit. So I'm shifting it in a little bit now, such that the distance is reduced. And there you go. Okay. This is something that we can accept as a balance ruler. Alright. 
So what I'll need you to do then uh, is to tablet all this reading into the table over here. Okay, let me get to the table. This is your table. So notice that uh, W1 is the weight of mass 1. So to calculate the weight 1, you have to use this equation and the unit is in newtons. So do that for all, you find that actually in fact all the readings is the same. For distance D1, be mindful not to just write down 5 centimeters. 5 centimeters just refers to the marking. The distance D1, if you recall, is actually 45 centimeters. Likewise, do the same for weight 2 and distance D2 is where you measure from the marking here. Let's say the marking is perhaps maybe the 80 centimeter marking and this is a 50 centimeter marking for the optical pin. So therefore D2 would be 30 centimeters. Okay? Right. So tablet all your distances and after that calculate the anti-clockwise moment and the clockwise moment. Now if this ruler is balanced it will mean that the ruler is obeying the principle of moments. Okay? So if that's the case, if it's um, obeying the principle of moments, you find that um, this ruler will remain unmoved because the anti-clockwise moment created by one of the mass and the other clockwise moment, they will have the same size. Okay? So if the ruler is balanced, as suggested by the video, it will mean that this ruler is now obeying the principle of moments. Right, then uh, repeat the steps uh, 4 and 5 for other values of D1 at 40 cm, 35, 30 and so on. Okay, after you have completed this, I will need you to then uh, plot the graph of D1 against D2. Okay, the other objective of this uh, experiment today is for you to plot this graph before you go home okay plot it on the graph tape uh, on the graph itself and determine its slope i have gone through all this with all of you um, before the term closes and i'd like you to find the y intercept okay this uh, the graph has to be handed up together with the worksheet before you leave for the day right thank you